Welcome fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and today I have my November wrap up. It's actually just a couple days before the end of November. Um, so I don't have like the page count yet because there's still a couple books that I know I'm not going to finish this month. Um, they're bigger books and so I've just been slowly working on them. And so I don't have the accurate page count yet. Um, but I did read, and they don't count as far as like the total books read, but I did read a total of 13 books, which originally I had 13 prompts, but I did not read the books for the prompts. <laughs> um, I read uh, different books and extra books. I did have 10 extra books. I did not get to everything that I wanted to add on or like I said, the books that were actually part of my TBR game. But I did read a good amount, and I did have three rollovers. One of them will continue to roll over, um, because it's such a chunker book. Uh, and then, yeah, I'll have another rollover because it's also a large book. But let's go ahead and get into it. So, I, like I said, I did read 13 books. They were all physical. None of them were audio or digital. I did read 11 fiction and 2 nonfiction. Um, and then as far as rereads go, I know I had one. Um, I think that was the only one I reread, though. So, so yeah, just one reread. Uh, and so, yeah, it was a good month. Top moods were mysterious, adventurous, and dark. And then the genres, again, these overlap, so there's more than 13. But I had four young adult, four fantasy, two thriller, two romance, two mystery, two crime, one middle grade, one sociology, one children's, one science fiction, one science, one religion, one memoir, one horror, and one historical. So a really, really good month. Um, I did manage to read two books for nonfiction November. I did not get to any of my Nora Roberts books for Nora November, unfortunately. I just did not have time for them, which I didn't really expect to have time for them. But then I also kind of took it slow as far as reading this month anyway. Um, I do participate in Kim from Expedition Through Pages, her Tales from Two Trails game, and I was able to complete uh, four of the six prompts for that, which I'll tell you which ones. When I get into it, I didn't complete seasonal or the word of the day dapple. Those two I was not able to complete. So a really, really good month. Um, as always, we start from the bottom and work our way up. So we'll start with the ones that I did not get to and then go from there. So I did not get to any of the Nora Roberts books. Like I said, I wanted to at least try to read this one, um, Remember When, which is J.D. Robb is her, um, like, a, a different pen name for her. And I was really hoping to read this one. Didn't get to it. And then I had the... Um, the Gallagher, Gallagher's of Ardmore trilogy, didn't get to the, and then I also had Midnight Bayou, and these would have completed all the different prompts on the bingo board, but like I said, I just didn't have time, these weren't high priority, so they will go back on the shelf for me to reread slash read for the first time at a different date. And then we had, this was for my three unusable discs, um, it's The Return of the King, which is the third book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, uh, and this is by J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, and yeah, I just didn't have time, <laughs> again, kind of a theme, like I said, I was kind of really lax on my reading, if I wasn't feeling it, um, I didn't, you know, push myself, I did a lot of other things, there were several days I didn't read this month, and things like that. Um, and like I said, that was for three unusable discs. This one was for the prompt musical instruments by Co, uh, cause it was a Coco. Uh, and so this was the Yeet Girl in the Love Song by Emma Scott. I was really hoping to squeeze this one in, but again, there's just, it's not going to happen. So that will go back on the shelf and this will go back in the honey jar. Then we had for the prompt... Let's see here if I can get it out of sliding. Um, this is the Big Bad Wolf and it's anti-hero. I did not get to this. 
And this is The Ashes and the Star Cursed King by Carissa Broadbent. I really love the War of Lost Hearts trilogy by this author. And then I read the first one and this is the duology with a little novella. Um, and enjoyed the first one, but not as excited to dive in. I know I will get to this one sooner rather than later. So I wasn't that worried that I wasn't able to get to it. There's that. Then we had for the prompt, let me find it here. It was the movie Brother Bear, and so it was Alaskan Landscape. And for that, I had chosen The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. This would have been my first Kristen Hanna. Didn't get to it, so that's going to go back on the shelf for now. Then we had another, um, it was Little Red Riding Hood. I separated The Big Bad Wolf and Little Red Riding Hood. So we had Little Red Riding Hood, and it was to be a red cover. And for that, because it doesn't have a dust jacket and it's very red, I chose One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. Again, didn't get to that one. And lastly, the last one, which I was hoping to squeeze in in these last couple days, but I just decided I wanted to kind of film and get everything wrapped up before um, I do 24 Days of Bookmas in December. So I'm just going to work on the two that I have roll over. Those are, will be what I read the next couple days. And this one was Pirates or Ship, and this is Treasure Planet. And for that one, I had chosen Saint by Adrian Young. This is the prequel to Fable and Namesake. Um, again, another one I know I'm going to get to sooner rather than later, so I wasn't like too upset that I didn't get to it this month, because um, I'll probably go on a TBR fairly early in the next year. So those are all going back on the shelf. All these prompts will go back in the honey jar. So yeah, that was, what, five books um, from my TBR game plus the three unusable discs. So six books that I did not get to uh, from the TBR game itself. The two that will be rolling over, I did start the Iliad and the Odyssey. This was for, um, it was a bookworm and it was page number chosen by die or Dice. Uh, and I rolled a seven, which means the page count needed to be within the 700 range. And this with the Iliad and the Odyssey both does, is just over 700. So this is one that I will continue to work on the last few days of the month. And it will roll over because there's no way I'm going to finish it. And then the other one was a rollover from last month. Um, which I knew I wasn't going to finish this month either. And this is just one. It wasn't part of a game or anything, but I just did start reading it in October. And that's Shogun by uh, James Clavell. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm almost 50% of the way, which was kind of my goal. I think I'm 45% right now. Should definitely hit that 50% mark um, within the next few days. And then it will roll over in December and January. I'm not sure how much I'm going to get rid of it in December because, like I said, I'm doing 24 days of bookmas, but I'm hoping to finish it for sure in January. So those are my two rollovers. I did not have any DNFs, which is always fantastic, and I did not have any two stars, which again is always fantastic, and it was kind of nice because I had three three stars, four four stars, and then I ended up with six five stars, so it just kind of went up. So as always, we start from the bottom, so I kind of work my way up to my favorite. So bottom of the barrel was uh, Troublemaker by Leah Remini. This was for Nonfiction November. This was an extra one. So it fit for Nonfiction November. There were different um, like challenge words, which were fraud, web, capital, and display. And I thought this one worked perfect for all of those because... It talks about cytology and they're kind of a bit of a fraud. Um, you know, I've been watching little clips from her on the web. Um, Capital Scientology does take a lot of money from people. And then display, she's an actress, so she's very much on display. Uh, and then it also worked for Word of the Day for uh, Tales from Two Trails, uh, Queremonious. Queremonious, yeah because she is a troublemaker and she's very argumentative and she's calling Scientology out so they probably look at her as a very queermonious person. So there was that one. It's, I did enjoy it. It's not that I didn't enjoy it. Um, three stars I typically mean I enjoyed them. There's just things I didn't love about it. And this one, it kind of 
for me, it kind of jumped around. So part of it was kind of like her time in Hollywood. Part of it was about like Scientology. And then part of it was kind of her memories and such, her memoirs. And so I think it just wasn't as smooth as it could have been because it was a bit disjointed. And that in itself wasn't a problem because, you know, it captures all the different aspects. But I think it just could have been a little smoother as far as, like, transitions and such. So I did enjoy it. I did find it interesting learning about Scientology a little bit more um, and such. So she's not somebody, like, I watched King, Queen of Kings um, when I was growing up and I really enjoyed that show. But because she is kind of very outspoken, she's not necessarily a person that I would get along with in real life. Uh, and so I just, you know, that played a part in my enjoyment of it as well. Like just her voice, I guess. But overall, not bad. If you're interested, if you either really like her or you are interested in Scientology at all, like learning a little bit more behind the scenes and an experience of somebody who kind of grew up in Scientology, I think this is definitely worth it to pick up if it's something you're interested in. So there was that one. Then we had, so this one was both a rollover and then it also worked for social media for Tales from Two Trails. And that's the only one left by Riley Sager. It wasn't officially part of my October um, TBR game. It was just an extra one that I was really hoping to get to in October and I didn't. And so since it worked for social media, because I went on, I think, Goodreads or Storygraph. I don't remember which one. I'm pretty sure it was Goodreads. And it popped up. So I was like, perfect. I wanted to read it anyway. And yeah, I did enjoy this one. Um, I just, I didn't love it. Like, I like the concept of it because basically it's loose. It's basically loose. <laughs> It's loosely based, sorry, I cannot talk. My words got all jumbled there. It's loosely based on like Lizzie Borden. So you have Lenora Hope and it has a little rhyme that goes on with it. In the beginning of this one, that rhyme keeps the, like the main character keeps thinking back to that rhyme a lot. And that kind of got repetitive and I did not enjoy that as much. Um, I found, like the characters pretty interesting I did enjoy them and then in the end I think it just went too far like I think it tried to do too much I think it should have ended earlier than it did and I didn't think we needed some big reveals on some of the characters that happened like it was just it went a little too much um I think less is more in this case but the story itself like I I did have a good time with it the atmosphere of this house on this cliff and it's kind of falling apart um, and the cliff is kind of disintegrating too. That was really cool. Um, and so, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I did also see the twist coming, um, which was part of why it dropped it a little lower for me. I don't mind when I can see the twist coming necessarily. Um, it just depends on how the story's written whether I enjoy it or in this case I saw it pretty early on and so it was just like okay come on get to it already um because it took a while before it got to that point but yeah not bad just not something I loved and this was my first Riley Sager I do see myself actually keeping this book and rereading it just for kind of the vibes of it because I did really enjoy like the likes of the atmosphere um, but yeah, it wasn't amazing. It's not something that's going to make me want to run out and buy something else from this author. Um, but not bad. So there's that one. And then my last three star was Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. Um, and this was the buddy read for Allison on a book break. She does a start and stop buddy read. Uh, she just started it. This was the second month. And... Yeah, <laughs> I really love the format of this. This is fully mixed media. And when I first started it, I wasn't sure about the format because I've never read something fully mixed media before. But once I kind of got into it, I actually really, really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, My gut instinct as far as kind of what was going on was correct. But I kind of just 
kept discounting that. And it wasn't because of anything the author wrote, which sometimes, you know, in a really good mystery thriller, like the author will make you question yourself, which I like that. In this case, it had to do with something else that made me kind of doubt it. Um, but I don't know. She does use, this author uses like, um, kind of mental health in a way, uh, and trauma that I didn't necessarily feel good about. You know, I am somebody who does struggle with mental health and such. And so it wasn't something that I necessarily felt good about the way she did it. Um, but she kind of veered away from something else that would have been distasteful. So it was like, okay, great. Like, I'm glad you veered away from that. But then the whole mental health, which other people didn't seem to have a problem, you know, because it was a buddy read, so there was discussion and such. Uh, so not bad, just not my favorite um, because of that. And I did like the format, though, which really, really surprised me, so... There is that one. So those are all my three star reads. Then, like I said, we have four four stars. And so the first one was an extra one for the Tales from Two Trials game. And that's My Face to the Wind, The Diary of Sarah Jane Price, a Prairie Teacher, Broken Bow, Nebraska, 1881. This is a Dear America book. And this one was written by Jim Murphy, I believe. And this was for, like... TBR jar or, you know, random number. So I just ran randomized the number. I have all my unread books on an Excel sheet. So I just randomized the number and this is what came up. And I love the Dear America book. So this one follows um, Sarah and she loses her father. And so there's enough money. She's staying like in this boarding house, but then there's boarding house, the woman who runs the boarding house is going to send her basically to like this girls orphanage slash school um, that's run by the church and she just does not want to go. She wants to stay. So she wants to become a teacher and so she kind of petitions to become the teacher. Her father was the teacher for the town and they don't have anybody else. And so even though she's two years too young to technically be the teacher, um, she becomes a teacher and then she kind of, there's a little bit of a struggle because she has to prove herself to the school board, essentially. And this one, a lot of the Dear America books um, deal with, like, you know, Native American issues or, like, um, what's the word? I'm really having trouble with my words today. Like, marginalized groups, right? And this one wasn't necessarily that, but it's just a look kind of in the life. Uh, during that time period which so I still really enjoyed it but not as much as some of the other ones like about issues in the past regarding Native Americans or um people of color things like that uh so this one wasn't didn't kind of have that social aspect to it like some of the other ones but it was still really really enjoyable so I really liked that one then we had my genre-a-thon pick, which was A Cozy Mystery, and that's The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, or Osman, I think Osman. Uh, and this one, I'm not a big cozy mystery fan, so the fact that this got four stars was really good. I really, really, and I've heard mixed things about this. I've heard mixed things, and so I was kind of like, I don't like cozy mysteries, I've heard mixed things, how am I going to feel? I really loved the characters in this one. Like, absolutely loved them. You have these four senior citizens who are part of, like, this retirement village. And they're solving a crime. What I liked about this, my, one of my problems with Cozy Mysteries is that it doesn't always feel very believable. Because you just have this random, run-of-the-mill person trying to solve this murder or whatever. But in this case, like, they all had, like, things from their past that made them good candidates to try to solve this murder and the fact that they're senior citizens and they're just kind of doing what they will was really enjoyable. The plot of this one though, like the whole murder mystery aspect and the plot, I had a really hard time getting into it. Like I didn't find it engaging at all. So my thinking is I'm going to try the next one in the series and see if maybe I enjoy the plot better since I really did like the characters. Um, because yeah, it was just, you have this development guy and he's trying to, um, secure land to continue developing this retirement community as, as well as 
he wants to remove this graveyard like the retirement community used to be like a nunnery I guess and so there's this graveyard with nuns and he's trying to get that to be removed and there's a couple different murders and such so yeah I love the characters the whole plot line with the developer and such wasn't as enjoyable for me so there's that one then we have the one I'm still working on this I have like 150-ish pages left. I think it's 147 pages left. So I am still working on this one, but I will finish it tonight, and I know enough to know my rating on it. And this one was for the prompt, um, Talking Animal Sidekick. This is Frozen, of course, Elsa and Anna. And so this is a Borzen by Garth Nix. This is the third book in the Old Kingdom series. I gave five stars to the first two. The first one, you're following Sabriel. She's in the Borzen, and it's basically they do necromancy, but in reverse. So instead of raising the dead, they're putting the dead back down. And you have the second one, it's about Lyrael, who is part of the Claire, which are seers. They can see like bits of the future. Um, and then in this one, it kind of combines. It's mostly following Lyrael, but it kind of combines the both of them. And you have the Old Kingdom, and so the Old Kingdom is like this kingdom, and it has magic. And it was originally, you have Charter Magic and Free Magic, and Free Magic is the bad magic. And so Charter Magic basically is used to suppress Free Magic. And then you have these Necromancers, which are raising the dead, and they're trying to raise like some ancient evil as well. And... Then you have, like, the other side of the wall, which is, like, just your general public, which don't have magic. And magic, of course, affects, like, technology and such. So the closer you get to the wall, the more things start to fail. And then there's, you know, soldiers that guard the wall and such. And, yeah, I don't know. I think this one's a little bit more drawn out. Like, they're still, like, really action-packed and such, but it just, the plot of it seems really drawn out. And so I'm not as engaged with it as I was with the first two. I still really like that atmosphere. Um, you, ha you know, you have animal sidekicks. So you have Mogget, which is a cat, which is a free magic, like, being, but he's been um, contained and is in servitude to the Borzen. And then you have the disreputable dog uh, in, from the second book and in this one. And I just, I love the disreputable dog so much. So enjoyable. The atmosphere, like there's moments when I'm reading this where I'm like fully into the book. And then with this one, for whatever reason, I, the scene's over and I just start my mind starts wandering instead of being fully engaged with the book and I'm having to reread a little bit. I'm still really enjoying it though. I really like the story. I like the characters. I like the atmosphere, um, the different components of the story. It's just the plot in this one is a little bit more drawn out. Uh, but yeah, so that was a four star as well, even though I haven't quite finished it. And then the top one of my four stars is From Below by Darcy Coates. This is another rollover, just one that I got it from my mother-in-law for my birthday. Really wanted to read it in October because it is horror, and then I didn't get to it, so I just rolled it over. And this was my first Darcy Coates. This has been an author I've been really, really interested in. I started this w with this one because I really like, like, water horror, and I don't know. I really wanted it to be five stars and it just wasn't. Again, I like the kind of the plot of it. You have this group of people and there was a ship that went missing and then it's found. And so you have this group of people and she's kind of doing a documentary. And so they're diving down to explore the ship. But something caused the death of these people. They were like way off course and they all died. And the ship wants the divers now like it's not done with the killing basically um and I really liked all the different components of it it just fell a little short for me because the stakes weren't very high if that makes sense like you kept waiting for it like oh this is gonna be you know this is gonna be really good and it just nothing 
And then, so the next, you know, tense scene, you'd be like, okay, this is going to be really good. And then nothing. Uh, and so the stakes just weren't very, really high. Like, I want something a little bit more high stakes when I'm reading horror, if that makes sense. I can't say more without spoiling it. But yeah, so that's why it only got four stars from me. But I still really enjoyed it. I liked the water horror aspect. I really enjoyed the writing itself. Like, it was easy to get into. It was very vivid imagery and such. So I am going to try more from this author. But this one was just a little bit of a letdown. Not much. I still really enjoyed it. Still four stars. So then we have our six stars. So kind of bottom of the barrel, which I was hoping it would be higher, is this one was for... Where is the, I know I put it in here. Oh, this one, was, that's right. It didn't have a, it didn't have a honey jar prompt. This one was for my character pick, which I got in Rabbit. So it was my free pick. And I've been wanting to continue on with the series. This is Famine, the third book in the Four Horsemen series by Laura Thalassa. And this one, so my favorite so far has been the first book. I didn't really like War. They've all gotten five stars, so keep that in mind. Like, I really like the writing of it. I like the, the like, Four Horsemen aspect of it. Like, I really, really enjoy that kind of... I'm not a big dystopian reader, but the dystopian aspect of it really works in this case. So keep that in mind that they're all five stars, but, like, the second one I didn't love because war and the way the love interest for war came together was kind of toxic and such which I mean they're the four horsemen they are toxic this one I had really mixed feelings because famine is very very cruel um and kind of gets enjoyment like you get the sense war is kind of he's just he's on his mission pestilence you kind of get the sense that he really didn't want to do what he was doing with famine he seems to kind of enjoy it almost and so it's like it's almost hard to like him but at the same time he has suffered from trauma like he wasn't didn't seem like you didn't get a whole lot of the backstory um but you get a little bit and so it seems like you know there was this event where he gets captured and tortured and that's kind of what set him like you know what you humans deserve this and I'm gonna enjoy this um, and so, yeah, there was a little bit of that, um, I don't know, I just, their relationship, I didn't love as much, um, I didn't ship them as much, but I still really like the writing and I like the concept of these books. I'm really looking forward to death and the way this one ended set you up really really well for death um so far it's been almost like companion novel ish where you can e read each of these as kind of a standalone but i think with death you're really gonna have to need to have read the other three uh, so i'm really looking forward to finishing off the series with death but yeah um this one i really enjoyed it it got five stars it just wasn't my favorite of the series i think i liked it better than war um but just a little bit of like he's just so cruel that it's kind of hard to like him if that makes sense which you shouldn't like the four horse anyway but here we are the next five star was for another frozen and it was sister sister um and so this one i read barbarian's prize by ruby dixon i did this because you have that group of women so you kind of have that sisterly aspect and then this one in particular there's two women left that haven't um resonated with their mate yet so basically if you're not familiar with the ice planet barbarians it's a series you have these women they were sex trafficked by aliens and then dropped on this ice planet and um, there's this r other race that has already been living there, and in order to survive on this planet, like, both races, you know, aren't native to this planet, you have to get a Kui, and the Kui resonates to your mate. Um, and so you have the last two women who have not resonated. This one is definitely darker than some of the other ones. The first one, you do have some rape and such, so this one deals with that because she was one of the women that was forced by these aliens who originally sex trafficked them um so keep that in mind like she's having flashbacks and such and so that's definitely 
can be very triggering, so keep that in mind if you're going into this series. But this was probably one of my favorite Ice Planet Barbarian books. There was one other one that was kind of a friends to lover situation that I really enjoyed, and then this one is also friends to lover as well, um, which I just absolutely love. And I liked because they're not resonating, and that was the same thing with the other one. She wasn't resonating, and so their relationship is forming without that resonant going on which I actually liked because in some of the other books like th that resonating kind of got a little bit overpowering I think so I didn't enjoy them as much but yeah this is probably one of my favorites from the series so far um and yeah I, I really enjoyed it so there's that one then let's see here then we have another extra one so I read this for parody for Tales from Two Trails, and that's the true story of the three little pigs, uh, as told by John Cieska, um, and illustrated by Lane Smith. This is a book from my childhood, um, and I just absolutely love this book. Uh, so it's basically a parody of the story, The Three Little Pigs, but it's told from the wolf's point of view, and that he's not the big bad wolf trying to eat these little pigs. He just wanted to borrow some sugar to make a cake for his dear old granny. <laughs> and yeah, it's just really cute. The illustrations are a lot of fun. Uh, and so, yeah, I was, I really enjoyed revisiting this one and it was perfect for parody. It's nice and short. So as an extra book, it wasn't anything, um, to add on. So there's that. Then we have, we had Peter Pan and this was Pirates or Crocodiles. And for this one, I chose Castaways of the Flying Dutchman by Brian Jacquez. This is the first book in a duology. I had actually already read the second book. I think it's called Angel's Command, I want to say. Um, and really, really enjoyed that. So I saw this at a thrift store a few months ago. And I was like, I have to get that because I want to read that. This one, I really loved it. This would have worked for the talking sidekick too. So you have Ben and Ned. And um, Ned, they're both castaways from the ship, the Flying Dutchman. When it was cursed, they got cast away and they were saved by this angel and commanded by it, which is why the second one's called Angel's Command. And they're basically sent to these different places that kind of need their help. So after, since I read the second one first, going into this one, I was expecting, you know, a very nautical type book. That's not the case in this one. You get that with the second one, but this one, not it at all. So you get a little section in the beginning where he's on the Flying Dutchman, um, and so they're on the ship and such. That's nautical. But then once he gets saved, he goes and he's with the sheep herder for a little while, and then he goes to this other village um, which there, there's a, a guy, like a developer trying to buy up the village. Um, and so he's there with that, those people, and he's basically trying to help save this village. And so that's the main portion of the book. Like there's a small section where he's on the ship, a slightly larger section, or maybe not larger, but another small section where he's with the sheep herder. And then the bulk of this book and the plot is him in this village trying to help save this village like he has some he makes friends with some kids there's this group of bullies that he kind of stands up to for these kids um there's these adults that there's like this old lady who's like I'm not selling um and then the, he's basically helping them I like that there's kind of a generational aspect that's really cool but if you're going in expecting you know a very nautical themed book this isn't it at all. So definitely keep that in mind. If this is something you're interested in reading, I still really enjoyed it, though. I loved the plot. I, I liked, you know, how he was saving his kids. And it was interesting because in the second book, you know, he's already kind of, he's been, you know, a, mortal for generations, and he's kind of on the run from the Flying Dutchman. Um, and so he already kind of has this kind of confidence to him. Where in this one, in the beginning, you see that he he's he's a mute, and so people think he's dumb, um, which he's not, you know. And so you kind of see him in the beginning before he kind of had that confidence, which I really really enjoyed. So yeah, absolutely love this. I love <laughs> I love the combination of Ben and Ned together. Absolutely wonderful. 
The next one was another extra one, and it was for Nonfiction November. So this was my second Nonfiction November book. And that is Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs by Caitlin Doty. Um, Caitlin, there's a YouTube channel she has called Ask a Mortician, which I absolutely love. I read her other book, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, which I loved, which was more like a memoir type. This one is more, it's questions kids have asked her and so each little chapter is a different question and she's kind of answering it sometimes you know with facts and information sometimes in theory because like you know what happens if you die in space um and so she kind of goes into theoretically if you died in space you know you would have these different options and such and I loved it it does so I've seen some things where people think this is for kids it's really not like maybe late middle grade to through you know young adult maybe um I could see reading this and enjoying it but any younger than that definitely not so even though these questions are posed by kids and sometimes she said you know don't do that kids it's really not like this I think is more for like young adult to new adult maybe and adult as adults uh, like myself can enjoy it as well um but just because it's written by kids and it has like these awesome illustrations let me so each chapter kind of has an illustration that goes along with it um so we buried my dog in the backyard what would happen if we dug him up now and so you have the girl with with the dog uh the illustrations are really cool and they're done by who are they done by um, I'll tell you here in a second. Diane Ruse. Um, and I do want to read, there's one more book by her called From Here to Eternity that I really, really want to get and read as well. But yeah, this was so cute. She has like this humor and she really approaches the topic of death, um, in kind of a lighthearted, humorous ways while still giving you factual information. And so I really, really enjoy it. And she tries to take you know, the fact that death can kind of be a taboo subject kind of out of the mix and like just really like everybody's going to face death. Um, it's, it's part of living, you know, people around you are dying, you're eventually going to die. And so I really, really enjoy watching her and then I've enjoyed reading her stuff as well. So there's that one. And then lastly, this was my mood read. So along with um, the Iliad and the Odyssey, it was a uh, black space, so I pulled two honey jar prompts. Um, and so I pulled Mood Read, which with the 700 page count, it really couldn't combine those two. And this is one that I read the first book, Blades of Secret, um, in, was it October or November? I can't remember. Anyway, I knew I wanted to read this one. And so that was, of course, Bookworm Mood Read, which that always goes back in, even though I completed it. Bookworms typically go back in. And so this is Master of Iron by Trisha Levenseller. Blades of Secret was my top read of whatever month. I think it was October that I read it. Um, it was It was my top read. And this one again top read I just really really like the characters again I didn't love this one as much as the first one but I still really really enjoyed it and the first one you have more of like that traveling aspect so you have this group and they're traveling so basically you have a Ziva and she's a bladesmith but she can imbue her blades with magic and so in the first one she ends up creating this sword for this warlord and it takes secrets so when she's showing it to the warlord she ends up getting the secrets of the warlord and learns that she wants to basically conquer this kingdom so you have this kingdom and the king has a bunch of children and so he decided instead of the oldest kid getting the kingdom he was gonna separate the kingdom into different parts and each of his children was gonna rule a different part of the kingdom essentially um and so this warlord is not happy about that and wants to basically conquer all the different children and bring the kingdom back together so she ends up taking the sword and goes on the run and so things happen and then this is following that aftermath but this one they're no longer there's points where they're kind of running and traveling but it's not like the first one where they're on the road for the majority of it but you have Ziva her sister 
a mercenary they hire and then this like scholar who's really interested in learning about Ziva's magic and how it all works. So, um, yeah, I just, so good. Ziva is definitely neurodivergent, deals a lot with like panic attacks and whatnot. And her and the mercenary is her love interest and just the way like he's just so patient with her. Like I absolutely love their combination. I can really relate to her. You know, I'm autistic and deal with like panic attacks and such. And so I just, I absolutely love the representation in this book. I love the story. It was really easy to get into. Um, I read the Daughter of the Pirate King duology from this author. Really enjoyed that as well. But this one is by far like stand out because of that neurodivergent rap. Um, and I definitely am going to keep an eye on, you know, future things from this author for sure, because I absolutely loved it. So there is my top one. Now, as always, I do do a top three as well. And that does not necessarily equal to star ratings. It's just which books gave me, gave the most impact, basically. So my top three, number one is Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs? I just love the humor and the lightheartedness that Caitlin Doty has when she's talking about the subject. Like, it's just very refreshing. It's, you know, it makes it less scary, I guess. I love how informative it is. Like, it definitely... She, uh, you know, has facts and science to kind of back up the process and everything. It opens the dialogue to talk about death for sure. Um, I think if you do have, like I said, middle grade, you know, through teen to young adult, new adult, um, it would open up that conversation. This is a book that maybe you could read with them um, and open up that dialogue. And the illustrations in that one were just so awesome. Like, it really added to it for sure. The second one, surprisingly enough, was one of my three stars, and that is Murder in the Family by Kara Hunter. And that one, I like, I really enjoyed the format of the mixed media. Like, I didn't think I would. Um, and like I said, it did take me kind of a minute to get into the story because of it. But once I got in, like, I really enjoyed that format. I like the true crime feel of it. So even though it's not true crime because it's fiction, it has that feel of, of true crime for sure. The fact that it was part of the start and stop buddy read, that just really enhances the reading experience. And so that definitely is one of the reasons why it made it into my top three. And then the show aspect. So basically in it, it's it, they're doing a show um, trying to solve this murder. I don't think I, I mentioned that when I, I talked about it before, but there's a show and they're um, talk, trying to, it's a cold case. And so they're trying to, they have six experts and they're trying to see if they can solve this cold case. Um, and so I really enjoyed that show aspect as well. And then the last one is The True Story of the Three Little Pigs <laughs> um, by John Seska. And it's just a childhood favorite. You know, this is a book that I've enjoyed since I was little and I keep coming back to it. So it had it in the top three. I like the humor in it. It's funny. It's lighthearted. Like, I don't read a lot of books that have humor. Um, and I'm very kind of picky with my humor. And so, you know, I had two books that I really enjoyed the humor in this month. But again, the illustrations, like, they just, they, it's a picture book, so it really does enhance the story. And then you have that anti-hero aspect, so it's told from the wolf's point of view, and I just really, really enjoyed that as well. So, that is my November. Like I said, I do have a couple more uh, days, which I will be working on these two books during see if I can make a little bit more progress because I'm not sure how much I'll read of either of those in December because um, I am, like I said, doing 24 days of book miss, so you'll be able to see that um, The I do a confirmation video, compilation video, which will come out the beginning of January, but if you want to follow along, I will be posting on TikTok and maybe Instagram. I'm not a big Instagram user, but I've been trying to do it more. Um, so I might be posting on Instagram as well. 
Uh, and yeah, that's it for today. Let me know if you've read any of these, if there, any of these are on your radar at all, what your favorite book of November was, and I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.